Hello everyone and welcome to a very nice game uh, from the penultimate round of the girls uh, world junior championship yesterday we've seen how Miao Lu defeated Karissa Yib the top seed of the tournament and this round she faces the leader of the event uh, Bulgarian international master Beloslava Krasteva and uh, it's it's just a wild game really uh, an incredible fight uh, that really shows how even when uh, you know you've lost all hopes in the position you can still find resources if your opponent uh, really doesn't give it um, uh, they're all uh, so let's check it out uh, Miao Yilu sh uh, has the white pieces and she opens with pawn to e4 we have pawn to c5 Belosala goes for the Sicilian defense knight f3 e6 and uh, sorry not e5 e6 uh, and now pawn to c3 the Alapin variation against the Sicilian and now uh, you will pretty much always see d5 or knight to f6 here those are the top two moves but here we have queen to a5 trying to completely throw off Miao Yilu uh, out of her uh, opening book uh, and it's a really uh, tricky move to face now if you ask the engine what to play here I've never seen the move uh, the engine says bishop d3 is the top move later on you're gonna put it to c2 and slowly develop uh, yeah or okay there are some other moves you could consider bishop d to bishop to c4 uh, but Miao Yilu goes for the immediate pawn to d4 and queen to a5 kind of uh, is played with the idea of stopping this uh, c captures and d4 recapture okay c captures knight captures she does get the knight to this uh, usual square against the Sicilian but usually it's not there when the pawn is on c3 we have pawn to a6 and now there are a couple of games in the database where bishop to d3 was played but here we have knight to d2 and it is now already as of move six that we have a completely new game so okay uh, Belosava continues development d4 uh, d6 we have a4 trying to box in the white queen before it the black queen before attacking her knight to f6 and now knight to c4 the queen has to retreat queen to c7 to also uh, add support to that uh, d6 pawn it is attacked by the knight and uh, x-rayed by the queen here uh, we have pawn to a5 grabbing more space preparing knight to b6 and knight b to d7 now controlling the b6 square we have bishop to d3 and now bishop to e7 so both players castle now castles castles and now rook to e1 and here uh, pawn to b5 if you want to make uh, a breakthrough you have to play this otherwise you could go for something like knight to e5 a slow play it with rook to e8 but she goes for the immediate pawn to b5 and okay you know from experience once this happens you will play a captures and b6 au passant uh, knight captures and now knight to a5 stopping the development of the light square bishop on this long diagonal uh, so forcing her to play bishop to d7 but now it can be played as the a6 pawn is not um, attacked twice for the moment as long as the knight is on a5 we have bishop to d2 uh, and now rook f to d8 you, you probably were expecting rook f to c8 but the rook to d8 with the idea of um, executing d5 as the queen is still on d1 so pawn to b4 and now pawn to e5 we have knight back to f3 and now a very very tricky idea pawn to d5 which objectively doesn't work but it's a great practical attempt uh, so e captures on d5 knight captures and now knight captures on e5 we have bishop to f6 and now look at this position now this is objectively winning for Miao Yilu but uh, you have to play it very very uh, precisely uh, now knight captures on f7 is a move that comes to mind because you have the bishop here you have the queen ready to jump to h5 so what happens if we just play this it's a great move it's not the best but it is great I'm just going to show it king captures queen h5 check the king will go to f8 and you will capture on h7 and you have this great position the bishop can come to g6 uh chances are you are not losing this with white but she plays the absolute best move and that is knight captures on d7 and now look at this queen captures on d7 and why is this position so strong for white uh well uh, Belislava does have this uh, annoying pressure for Miao Yilu on the d file the bishop uh, here could be weak the dark square bishop could be weak uh you can't really uh, start advancing with c4 right away if you play c4 right away then uh, of course you blunder the rook on a1 uh, but uh, the move that Miao Yilu played is the absolute top move and it is the winning idea and that is rook to a3 so you move the rook from a1 and now what can you play there's just uh, not a good follow-up to give you an idea let's say you play rook 8 to c8 you somehow try to develop c4 is coming and once you move the knight c5 is coming the uh, rook on a3 isn't just out of the 
uh, grasp of the dark square bishop on uh, f6 it also guards your bishop on d3 and now you are free to just start advancing your pass pawn also the knight cover c6 so you know once you figure out how to uh, put your bishops on useful squares uh next it's i mean it's completely winning so here belislava tries a different approach she plays knight to f4 we have bishop captures on f4 and now queen captures on d3 uh, kind of blundering the queen, but only for one move. Rook to e8 with check. We have rook captures on e8 and queen captures on d3. Uh, but now, of course, uh, some back rank uh, issues uh, emerge. Rook to e1 check. You have to block with the queen. Rook captures on f1, king captures, and now rook to c8. So uh, fighting against the, that c4 pawn push, because if this pawn was not on c3, if it was on c4 and c5, uh, this is game over for black. So bishop to d2, Miao Yilu defends the c3 pawn, and now pawn to h5, getting rid of um, uh, back rank issues, and also maybe introducing a way for your king into the game if you're not going to go this way. So king to e2, now king to h7, king to d3, and now rook to d8 with check, king to c2, and now rook to e8. And now uh, pawn to c4. This is what Miao Yilu played for, and now she just wants to start advancing her past c pawn to victory. We have rook to e4, Four, uh, and now comes rook to e3. This is sort of um, uh, uh, Miao Yilu's first suboptimal move uh, because you really want to start just pushing that pawn. Now, the knight here is hanging, and if you play something like knight to d5, okay, you're attacking b4, uh, but the, the b4 pawn is defended, so you don't have to worry about it. And you can move the knight, knight to c6, then capture on a6, and then you have two connected pass pawns uh, that will win you the game. However, she played a couple of... Um, uh, sub-optimal moves, to, to say the least, rook e3, rook to g4 attacking the g2 pawn, rook g3, rook to e4, rook to e3, and rook to g4, rook g4, uh, rook g3, rook to e4, and now in order to avoid repetition, she played king to b3, so okay, this is still in, in, uh, an incredible position for white, uh, rook to e2, and now you could play bishop to e3, it's perfectly fine, a rook to b2 will not be checkmate, as you do have the a3 square for your king, uh, but rook to d3 was played, and now we have rook captures on f2 and pawn to c5, so okay, uh, she did uh, uh, dance around with the rook a little bit, but now the pawn is marching forward, we have knight to c8, and now knight to c4, we have rook captures on g2, uh, pawn to c6 now. We have rook to e2, uh, and now bishop to e3, not allowing the rook to help out with the defense. Uh, rook to e1, and now king to c2, not allowing the rook to come to b1. So rook to e2 check, king b3, and again rook to e1. Of course, Belislava more than happy to repeat moves here. Uh, pawn to c7. Meow Yilu goes forward. We have uh, rook to b1 check, king to a4, and now rook to a1 check. Rook to a3 blocking, uh, and now rook to d1. And here, uh, here is the moment where you really have to uh, uh, evaluate the position and play the uh, absolute best move. Now, I could choose the pause the video moment for this video to be on pretty much any move because you have to make um, you know a, a decision you have to live with for the rest of the game, pretty much every move or, or every two moves. Uh, but I'm not gonna make it this one. Uh, we can we can even no okay I, I'm gonna show it to you now. Uh, she played knight to b6 here, which was kind of the idea between this uh, uh, dance of the king and the rook, uh, you know, uh, just uh, buy enough time for you to play knight to b6. You, you kick away the knight or you trade off the knight and then you promote the pawn and win the game. However, you don't rush it. You play king f, uh, a5 first, then you capture on a6 and then the b pawn wins the game as the b pawn always wins the game. However, she rushed it a little bit. Knight to b6 and this is what I meant uh, in the beginning of the video, how even when you've uh, seemingly lost all hopes, when there's nothing to hang on to, when, you know, nothing to fight for, uh, you know, such an opportunity presents itself because the knight on c4 uh, was controlling the e5 square and that is crucial here. By playing knight to b6, yes, she will win the knight, she will have a better position, but she sort of allows um, uh, Belislava back into the game uh, by playing bishop to e5 and of course she finds it. She's uh, fighting for the title of world champion, of course, uh, she, she, will, she will find the only move. And now you lose the knight, but you will get rid of the c7 pawn, which is a, a pretty big deal. And now look at this, knight cap bishop captures and now pawn to h3 okay you are now up a piece but um Abelislava has three pawns on the king side and you still cannot advance your past b pawn as it's not a past pawn yet you first have to get rid of the pawn here but look at this the bishop and knight are cutting the white king off so you have uh you, you have some issues here and she starts advancing them pawn to f5 now, you don't want to see pawn to f4 with your bishop on e3, so she plays bishop to g5 first, 
Pawn to f4, now this is a beautiful pass pawn. Pawn to h4, and now rook to f1, getting ready to cross the f3 square. Uh, rook to c3, attacking the bishop here, and just bishop to b8. Now the king can come into the game and eliminate the a6 pawn. So king to a5, and now pawn to f3. And here, uh, the problem is you cannot eliminate it. If you eliminate it, then the rook moves with check, and that's a huge problem. King b7, and now after f2... Uh, how do you defend against f1 check you have to play rook to f, uh, against f1 you have to play rook to f3 in hopes that uh, uh, she uh, promotes this pawn you sacrifice the rook and then you take the bishop but she will just move the bishop and that's it the next move f1 will win the game so uh, instead she goes king to b6 she, she, for the moment she cannot touch this pawn uh, bishop to e5 now with tempo the rook is attacked and now rook to d3 still keeps um, uh, Miao Yulu in the game uh, but she played rook to c4 and now there is only one way to win this game but of course you guys will find it and uh, you know yeah, it's uh, almost poetic uh, how, how, how uh, the, the game ends up uh, in a winning position for Belislava here. Feel free to pause the video and win the game while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on uh, realizing that the white king is on this diagonal and also on a dark square. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, the winning move is rook to e1. And now, of course, you are preventing bishop to e3, that would guard the f2 square. So he, she has to block with the rook, rook to c2, but now, now you already see what's happening. Pawn to f2, you give up the pawn because then the rook comes to this diagonal and that's where our good friend the dark square bishop uh, takes the game. So there's nothing else to be done here. Rook captures on f2 was played. Bishop to d4 check. And now king captures on a6. You wanted to get rid of this uh, pawn all, all along. But now it just doesn't help you. Uh, bishop captures on f2. And now pawn to b5. So yes, there's still a pass pawn. But of course the rook or the bishop will sacrifice itself for the pawn. We have rook to a1 check. Uh, king to b7. And now rook to a4. Uh, preparing to capture the h4 pawn. Pawn to b6, and now bishop captures on h4. And now, okay, you already see what's happening. Bishop captures, rook captures. Now the rook will sacrifice itself for the b pawn, and the two connected pass pawns on the king side will uh, defeat the, the lonely knight on c8. So, okay, king a6, moving the king, preparing to advance the pawn. Uh, just rook to a4 with check. We have king b5, rook to a8, and now knight to d6. We have pawn to h4, uh, pawn to b7, rook to b8, and king to c6, and now, of course, pawn to a h3 the knight can still capture the pawn so knight to e4 pawn to h2 and now knight to g3 the knight seems to be doing good work but the problem is you have to waste a couple of moves uh, here in order to resolve everything on the queen side uh, and uh, while that is being done Belislava will get her king into the game and win the game so king to g6 of course king to c7 and now rook captures on b7 with check king captures and now king to g5 and there's nothing more to be done here a few more moves will play, will play. king c6 king to g4 knight to h1 but now king f3 and once king to g2 lands that will be it Miao Yulu will have to um, uh, forfeit the game king to d5 was played king to g2 and he was in this position on move 74 that Miao Yulu resigned the game uh, as there is nothing more to be done here so uh, it was a, a very tough defeat, I'm sure, for her as she was uh, having an amazing event, but so is Beloslava and, uh, well, uh, only only one person can win the event. And uh, uh, she had a great chance as Miao Yilu. She, if she, if she uh, well, maybe not won this game, but she, she, she was uh, objectively <laughs> winning for the entire game, uh, she would have incredible chances of becoming the youngest uh, women's, uh, uh, or rather girls, uh, uh, world champion as she's only 13 years old and she's playing against competition up to 20 years old. Last uh, last round she defeated 20-year-old Karisa Yip and Belislav I think is like uh, 18 or 19. Uh, so, she, I mean, Miao Yilu is just playing incredible, incredible chess, but uh, yeah, Belislav really showed what those uh, extra few years of experience can do, uh, you know, b between uh, opponents. Uh, first, you know, taking her completely out of the book, probably with this queen to a5 move, as it's it, it really is a weird move. And here, uh, like I said, when uh, uh, when the position was here and you had to decide whether to uh, uh, whether to go for knight to b6 right away uh, or just play king a5 you know win the pawn and then uh, the, the pass b pawn will uh, 
resolve matters. Uh, she played knight to b6 and handed over the e5 square to the bishop, and that's uh, how she allowed her into the game. She's not lost here. Mary Louise still, this is still, of course, a better position for her, uh, but it's just a resource that never should have been there, and, you know, it's a shame for her that she missed it, but, of course, um, uh, props to, to Belislava for, for spotting it. And when you f when you play a, a very strong opponent, uh, you will of course always uh, face this. If you if you play like forty great moves and then you make one uh, slight inaccuracy, you, your opponent will hone, hone in on that like you know like, like a hawk and uh, punish you if you're not careful. It happens to everyone. It will happen to you if especially if you know yeah you're a club player. So you know, always be always be that person that uh, you know perseveres and uh, comes out on top uh, by by finding such little ideas throughout the game. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, let me just check. Uh, uh, sorry, that's a different tournament. I just want to check uh, what's happening in the uh, in the final round. So uh, yeah, in the final round uh, we will have uh, yeah, Belislava Krasteva will face. Um, uh, will face Argentinian international master Candela uh, by Francisco uh, Gu Gu Guecamburu, uh, and uh, Carissa Yip will face uh, Trisha Kanya Marala. And uh, as um, uh, Beloslava is the only one on eight and a half points currently, uh, all three uh, other other contenders are seven and a half. So uh, if uh, Beloslava gets a draw in, in the in the final game, she does have the white pieces. She will be the uh, girls world junior champion. But if she loses, then uh, you know it's open to the other players as well. So we'll see what happens. Uh, uh, great game, uh, all in all, by, by by both of them. Uh, so yeah, that's the game. Hope you guys uh, enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Jonathan uh, Johnson, uh, Robert Araton, Sashidar Pitapurapu, um, uh, uh, Jirai Kumar, and uh, Kate Ingram for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon, continuing to check up on your wonderful suggestions uh, and everything that uh, happens in the chess world. Uh, so thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day. And sorry, sorry a little bit about my voice. Uh, my, my daughter, again, started um, uh, kindergarten, and, you know, they have all sorts of fancy diseases there that they bring home every week. So, you know, it, it always tends to attack the voice. Uh, so, yeah, uh, thank you all, and I will see you soon.